Hello and welcome to part 8 of the Python for Finance tutorial series and in this one we're going to cover correlation. So I have a list of tickers that are in different industries but some of them are in the same industries such as the ones here, so the financial service industry. I have two that are in the gaming industry, I have two cryptocurrencies and we are going to check how the returns of all these tickers um, correlate with one another. The period that I've chosen is for almost two years, so from beginning of 2019 until 7th of November, which is the last available data that I have at the moment of this recording. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is, of course, get the returns. And a lot of people actually make the mistake to calculate the correlation based on the stock price, but that's not actually the, the best way to do it. So I'm going to create returns being a PD data frame it's going to be just an empty data frame and we're going to append the returns of tickers to it so we can calculate the correlation so for every ticker in tickers first we'll get the data and that's equal to web.data reader ticker yahoo so we're going to use yahoo finance for the period start and end so the one that we've already specified Actually, on the long run, the only thing that you will change is this part. So once you have uh, the code in, um, if you just change the tickers and the start and end period, you would be able to reuse the code. And for the rest, you should not be making much changes. Um, then once we have the data, we need to make sure that it's data frame. So it's easier for us to work with it. And then data ticker would be equal to data adjusted close dot pct change so we have the percentage change or that's the return in that particular day that's all actually that we need now we need to combine the return for all these uh, tickers into one data frame so if returns dot empty and returns is being this empty data frame so when it initially runs we want to make sure that returns returns is equal to data Ticker. Now the second time it goes through the for loop, well, we have data, so then we want returns to be equal to returns dot join data ticker how outer. Uh, we saw in the previous ex in the previous video that um, often we have days when um, a particular um, a stock exchange is closed now although all these trade in the in, in the US that's not the case for, for the for the Bitcoin for example um, and there actually we have data for every single day but we can't calculate the correlation because well there won't be uh, a, a price for the other companies so we're going to drop as uh, similar to what we did in the previous tutorial the days when at least one of um, the tickers has no price or in this case, it would be no return. So returns would be equal to returns.dropNA. And then um, let's see how it looks like at home. So I'm going to, um, let's get the tail. I already said it doesn't matter, just to make sure that we have some uh, data and it's correctly calculated. So basically what it does is it, it goes through the indexes to, to the tickers, so Apple, Tesla, Amazon, and so on, and it calculates the return for a given day. So this is um, 6th of November is actually Friday, so that's the last working day. 7th, even though I specified 7th, um, we won't have data there. So this is actually quite good. Now what we need to do is, we need to calculate the correlation. And the way we do it is, well, correlation is equal to returns.corr. That's it. And if we do that, we would be able to get um, uh, information about the correlation between um, these tickers. So let's let's see how that looks like. So if you print the correlation, what you will see is that Apple is, well, it's perfectly correlated with itself. Um, but it has, for example, 0.46 correlation with Tesla um, and so on. So when you have a lot of information like this, uh, you would spend a lot of time trying to process it and to see, all right, so what am I, what, what is the outcome? So that's why it's much better to have a correlation matrix, which is visualized. 
And that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to create fig, which would be plt.figure, and it would have, it would, we're going to add a subplot. Ax would be equal to fig um, dot add dot subplot one by one by one. And here we're going to create a heat map, which would be equal to Ax dot p color. What we're going to use is correlation. That's the data that we have. And the map would be plt dot m red. So we want red for negative values, or at least the, the, the lowest values, yellow, Y, L, and G, N for green. So we have red, yellow, green, that's our color map. So we're going to use this heat map, we're going to use the data that we have, and we're going to plot that um, in this way. And then color bar. well, we're going to use the heat map. Now there are a lot of things that we can do, but for now let's actually um, see how this looks like and then as we go we're going to make a lot of changes so it looks much better. So plt.show, um, that should be fine and let's see. We need to make sure that the ticks are correct, that we have a nice axis, that they, they look okay, that um, has no attribute at at underscore subplot, so not dot at underscore subplot. Let's see how that looks like now. So this is what we have at the moment. So first of all, um, we do see the red, yellow, green. That's, that's, that's great, that's good. However, it takes a percentage of the data of the low part as red, percentage as yellow, percentage as green, which, which we don't want. We don't want it to be zero to one. We want it to be minus one to plus one. So that's one thing that we need to adjust. We do see this correlation of one between the company. That's fine, but we don't know what the companies are because we have zero, two, four, six, eight. So quite some things to adjust. So where do we start? Well, um, let's first start with uh, the text. So what we're going to do is ax.set x ticks we're going to um when we take a look at the correlation we have the index and we have the columns so let's do this let's go step by step just to make sure that we have we know what what's the data that we're working it the correlation has actually the same amount of columns and rows in, in our case, it would be correlation index and correlation columns. And we have the exact same output because, well, we need to make sure that we, we can't calculate correlation otherwise. So this is our index and these are our columns. So we, we need the index to be on the X or the Y axis and the columns to be on the other side. But the first part, we need to calculate how many ticks should there be on the x and y axis. And in order to do that, we need to calculate that. So set x ticks, we're going to use np.arrange. And basically what we do is we take a look at the correlation dot shape and the shape returns the, actually the x and the y axis. So the index and um, the columns. In our case, we can just take one. It doesn't matter which one it is because they're both equal. Um, and then we're going to add plus 0 0.5 because um, actually if we if we take a look at the at, at zero it's it's actually at the line of the axis but we actually want it to be on the middle between the column so between the the first and the second result so it, it we actually know that the color is related to that and then minor is equal to false and I'm going to do exactly the same I'm going to copy it here um, here, so correlation dot shape, and for the y axis we need to do exactly the same. And actually, we can leave this one. I mean, ideally you would want it to be shape one because the one would be for the y ticks. But it doesn't matter which one you choose because the shape is is equal, so it won't make any difference. All right. Now, next, what we need to do is um, let's do it here. So row labels 
are correlation dot index. So those are our labels for the row It's just index and column labels is correlation dot columns. So we're going to AX set X tick labels and AX dot set Y tick labels. What we're going to do well as X labels, we'll use the row labels, right? Which is the correlation or in of, of dot index. But if you, if you want to have the, the step by step way, you can do this, or you can skip this row and column label and instead use correlation dot index and correlation dot columns. So the first thing that we did was we set the ticks. Um, so we know how many ticks there should be on both sides. So on the Y and the X axis. And then we specify what those ticks should represent. So this should make at least the, um, the, the correlation matrix look better, but we still have a lot of things to do. We still need to adjust for the colors. Um, oh, uh, NP is not defined. So import numpy as NP. I thought I had it imported, but I might be wrong. Probably I'm using a different version of the file. So numpy, of course, we need that to make sure that it's all right. So it looks a bit better. Um, and this is what I meant with the plus 0.5. If we didn't use that, uh, actually, Apple would appear here at this line. And actually, that's one way to show that. Let's remove that for now. It's always good to know why we're doing these things. It's not just to, to copy the code and, and finish and have the result, but it's, it's more important to know why we do it and then we can make the change ourselves. So as you can see, if we do it this way, Apple is actually this line when it should be um, in the middle. So we can clearly see that that bar is related to Apple. So going back, we're going to add these plus 0.5. Next, what we're going to do is um, we're going to rotate these X ticks because we, we, we could not really well see the description on our X axis. And the reason for that is that the, the description was a bit longer, so we could not well enough see. So here we see Apple, Tesla, Amazon, but they're quite um, close to each other. And then here by the, the Ethereum and Bitcoin is getting really messy. So we're going to rotate this, but also let's put them on top. So let's have this Apple on top. So and of course, change the color. So where do we start? Well, um, the first thing that we can do is AX dot invert uh, Y axis and AX dot X axis dot tick underscore top. So we're going to invert the Y axis and also we're going to put a X axis on top. Then um, here by setting where we set the ticks, we want plt dot x ticks rotation to be equal to 90. And the last thing that we need to do is heat map dot set color limits minus one to one. And we do this because we don't want to see the color red only because it's showing the lowest correlation results. We want to see red if it's really negative. So now the red, um, yellow and green would be actually linked to this scale of minus 1.1 instead of from zero point something, whatever was the, our lowest result. And this looks much better. Of course you can add a title and all that, but there are a few things that you can clearly see. If you take a look at, um, at Apple, it has positive correlation with a lot of the, uh, other company, except for the, um, cryptocurrencies. So you, there's not really high correlation there of the returns. You can clearly see that the, the financial industry companies in the, that operate in the financial industry are highly correlated between them. So Goldman Sachs, Citigroup, Bank of America and Morgan Stanley, they all have high correlation, which is over 0.5, probably somewhere around here, 0.75. We can see that of course. And also the two companies that are in the gaming industry, Activision and EA Sport have also high correlation and the cryptocurrencies are correlated between each other. 
Now, the ideally why you what you want here is if you decide to invest in um, in various assets, if you're already invested in let's say Goldman Sachs and Citigroup, um, and the question is if you have more to invest or if you want to to change your portfolio, would a change from from let's say to, from Goldman Sachs to Morgan Stanley would make a huge change compared to changing. Uh, Goldman Sachs to, to Amazon. Well, I mean, it's important to know that Goldman Sachs is highly correlated with other companies. So ideally, if, you're, if your goal is to diversify, you want to invest in companies to which Goldman Sachs is not highly correlated. So it can be um, Activision and EA Sports, it can be Apple. And this is basically one way to make sure that you don't um, basically that your investments are not within companies that are highly correlated because then you're missing the diversification and what that helps is if you are diversified basically if something is to happen in the financial sector industry well it won't maybe impact the gaming industry or tesla apple or amazon in this case so being diversified helps mitigate your risk for um, from some events that impact an industry or maybe some companies. So of course, on the other side, you can see that the cryptocurrencies are totally um, isolated from the rest. So the color here is probably around zero. So there's almost no correlation, positive nor negative with the companies. Now, this is something that you need to keep in mind um, when, when de deciding what to invest in or what your marginal or next investment should be in. This would be all regarding this tutorial and for the next one, I think it's good to take a look into creating portfolio and uh, reducing the risk there. Thank you for following and I'll see you in the next one.